It is open line night here on News Channel 5 Plus. I want to remind you of our topic tonight. We are talking about renters' rights, and we have a wonderful attorney with the Legal Aid Society joining us tonight to walk us through all the different scenarios to answer your questions. We've done some of that already. We'd love to do more. Number is at the bottom of your screen, 615-737 plus. Zach Oswald here with us, the Senior Deputy Director over at Legal Aid. Uh, you guys have a new pilot program with Connection Americas. Tell me more about it. Yes, um, it's a it's a program we titled it right to counsel, but what it really does is significantly expands the eviction defense that's available in the Nashville area. And I, I want to first off give the credit to Councilwoman Zulfat Sawara, who um, who piloted this proposal through Metro Council using uh, American Rescue Plan funds um, to make sure that tenants are are able to access attorneys. I, I mentioned in the last segment that less than 1% of tenants between, I think, 2016 and 2018, uh, according to a Vanderbilt study, were represented by attorneys in their defense to their eviction. And this program is going to allow attorneys to be in the courtroom with tenants protecting them. And we've got, um, there, the funds are out there that's gonna basically create a new housing office, for lack of a better term, in the Nashville area with about five attorneys um, to protect people in court and defend against those evictions. Is this already up and running? Or are we still just in the infancy stages here? We're in the infancy stages. Um, the, the program uh, officially went into Metro's budget on July 1st. Mm. Um, so we're we are hiring yeah. people, we are starting to train them um, so that we can get them in the courts as quickly as possible. Um, but it's, it's not only just gonna be representation in court, it's gonna be a lot of other things that renters need in this area. It's education. Um, a lot of people don't know how to read their lease agreement. They don't know what their rights and responsibilities are under the lease. And so it's gonna be teaching things like that. Um, it's going to be reaching out to uh, communities that are often left out of the legal system. We're talking about our immigrant community. We're talking about black and brown people that have been systemically uh, kept out of the court system or put in bad positions in the Nashville area as it comes to housing. It's, um, it's making sure that we've got legal navigators um, and housing navigators that are there to not only usher people through the court system, but to help them if they need to find better housing because they're in dilapidated homes uh, because they're living with those slumlords to help them find a new place to help them secure um, subsidies and those those rental vouchers and those sorts of affordable rental options that are out there um, and so we we talk about it like it's right to counsel because we're attorneys and we have egos and we want to make it about <laughs> us but we really we really are trying to make it about the community to make sure that we're out there teaching people so that they don't need us mm -hmm. uh, in court they've, they've already been able to handle it on their own or they're in a good situation or we better their situation um, and I'm just entirely excited to see what happens this is a it's a two-year pilot program um, and certainly what we would like to do is show the city of Nashville that we have been able to stabilize housing in the Nashville area so that it becomes a permanent part of the metro budget so who is eligible for this so it's going to be eligible for low income renters, but we're defining that in a way that expands what legal aid typically is allowed to define mm -hmm. as um, as low income. And so it's going to be up to 250 percent of the federal poverty guidelines. And I know that doesn't mean much um, without without an actual income chart, but it's going to be people who are coming um, to the court process who are low income and need help. Um, and can't otherwise afford an attorney. And, and my my suggestion once we're in the courtroom is um, let us tell you that you don't qualify. Come to us, let's mm -hmm. fill out the paperwork, let's figure it out. Because at the very least, if I can't represent you in court because of the guidelines, I can certainly hand you uh, a brochure that says these are what your rights are so that you can go in and defend it for yourself. That's very important. Let's talk about one thing we touched on earlier but we really didn't dive into, and that is when you have repeated Repairs that need made at your apartment. You have called the landlord over and over and over and over again. They're not being made. What's a renter to do? This is uh, this is something that we just struggle with because of the way that the law is designed in Tennessee. Um, I mentioned before, and I'm going to mention it again. Um, in Tennessee, if if the repairs are not what's considered emergency or essential, and that is defined as heat, water, gas. Um, and that's the end of the list, 
um, then then the land then the tenant is not able to withhold rent to make the landlord make those repairs. And so, my counsel to uh, to the tenants who are out there in this situation but where the repairs aren't being made is remember to continue to pay your rent. Make sure that you are putting your request for repairs in writing so that you can track it. Um, whether you're sending it as a letter, you're sending it as an email, make sure you are documenting a copy for yourself. Take a picture on your phone, go to the go to the local Kinkos and, and scan it. Anything that you need to do to make sure that you can document, this is the time I asked, this is how long I gave the landlord that still wasn't fixed. Ultimately, the, the remedies, the solutions in Tennessee are that the tenant can try and file a lawsuit against their landlord for an injunction. Um, but I will tell you, Carrie, um, if you look at that law in Tennessee to see if any courts have actually interpreted that in our in our appeal level, the answer is no. Hmm. Um, and so we don't actually know what that injunction against the landlord would look like or if a judge would even enforce it. And not to mention just on the tenant side, if you get an injunction against your landlord, you're probably not going to have a good relationship with your landlord right. moving forward and you're probably not going to get your, your lease renewed. The other option in the area is that you can terminate your lease and move somewhere else. Um, but again, we're in an affordable housing market where tenants are really having to make the decision, this is what's happening with my lack of repairs here, but is this situation better than what I can find elsewhere? And it's a really unfortunate catch-22 um, that that doesn't have an easy solution on the corner. I mean, it doesn't sound like unless it's the heat, water, or gas, a tenant really has much of a leg to stand on. It's it's certainly difficult to enforce those, and even the tenants who have those essential services that are missing in their property, I I wouldn't I wouldn't traverse those waters without at least speaking to an attorney first, because there are, there are some documentation steps that you mm -hmm. have to take before you can even enforce your rights, and if you if you miss that there then you still are looking at the possibility that you could be evicted even though you were in the right in the situation and even though you're living in a place that's substandard. I mean, we've had people call in and show pictures of like black mold just growing throughout their property and saying, I've showed them, I've, you know, I've done everything that I can do and they won't fix it and it's unhealthy and it's just really unfortunate. And I know that you must get frustrated by it too certainly frustrated by it. and and what we saw we haven't seen i haven't seen it as much recently but what we saw a few years ago um, is similar to the way that homes are flipped in nashville at a great profit is we were seeing entire apartment complexes of 100 and 200 units where the landlord would let it fall into disrepair because they were just planning to sell it so that the next person could come in renovate and then double or triple the rent mm. Well, that's, that's a good question, too. What happens, because we have seen this, too, where these properties have either just been sold. People are like, we're closing up shop. We're going to tear it down and build something new. You're out. So we'll talk about that. And then also where a new property owner comes in and rent goes up by not just 75 bucks or something. It's hundreds of dollars. What can people do? The first thing to remember, and, and this is in either situation, is if you have a lease agreement in place, that that lease agreement still protects you. And so the, the landlord can't come in and just end your lease because they've changed their mind about what they wanna do with the property. That's a contract that exists between the landlord and tenant for services, in this case, the, provi the providing of a home to the tenant. Um, the second thing to look out for, and this is what happened when those properties were flipped, is a lot of times landlords will go ahead and let a term lease, meaning one that lasts for a year or a, certain, a specific number of months, they'll let those lease agreements expire because what happens at the end of a term lease is generally that the lease turns into what's called a month to month. So. Carrie, if I originally signed a lease agreement in July of 2021, and now it's been 12 months, my lease expired in July of 2022, and it's flipped over to month to month, meaning every month it basically renews on itself. Well, leases that are in that month to month phase can be terminated at any time um, with 30 days notice ahead of the next month that the landlord doesn't want to rent to you anymore. Um, and so it's important for tenants to know that um, so that they can remember to ask their landlord to put them back in a term lease or if they ask the landlord to put them in a term lease and the landlord says, no, we're just going to go month to month from now on, that's a 
that's a decent indication that the landlord may have diff a different idea for what they want to do with their property moving forward and that the tenant if they want to make sure to protect all of their rights may need to start looking somewhere else that is going to put them in a term lease again because they're because they're really kind of sitting on a razor's edge at that point yeah it may seem good they're like oh well nothing's going up nothing's changing but in the long run it may not be good at all can we talk about that lease agreement because usually you're handed that lease agreement it's a couple pages long with all the small writing and who really reads it all you need to read it and what needs to be in it what what re, what things should you really be keying in on the most important things to know about in your lease agreement are uh, one you know what is the term if I if I'm signing an agreement today when is that agreement going to theoretically end the second is what is the amount of money that I need to spend for rent each month. And that, and for a tenant looking at that, they need to know, is this amount, this $500 on the line, is that just my rent or does that ever also cover utilities? Um, am I gonna have to secure my own utilities or is the landlord gonna cover them, but then bill me for them? Because that means that the $500 on, on my rent is no longer $500, it's 500 plus whatever bill that I get. Mm. Um, and, and the last is to, to make sure that you're paying attention to whether or not you've waived your right, again, for notice, for non-payment of rent, those sorts of things that might make a tenant, might surprise a tenant when they get an eviction because they're behind on the rent and they didn't realize that the landlord didn't have to tell them for filing the lawsuit. Those are kind of the three key things that I would look into. But as you said, you've got to read the whole document. You've got to make sure that you understand the whole document because that is the contract between the two of you. And if you're agreeing to something in there that you don't agree to, if you've already signed it, you agreed to it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you need help even reading it and understanding it, is that something that the Legal Aid Society can help with? That's a great question. Certainly under the pilot project with uh, with Right to Counsel in Nashville, it's gonna be something that we're interested in. And that's a really great tool um, for tenants to use, or, or a really great tool for tenants to use for things like reading over a lease agreement is, is the legal clinics that Legal Aid hosts. Um, you can get a list of those tenants. We host about nine to 10 every month and you can find that at www.las.org um, we do the we do about nine or ten of those actually in the nashville area and we do several more throughout the rest of middle tennessee and you can find those on our website call in say hey i want to talk about my lease agreement um, you can scan us or you can bring the paperwork obviously to the to the in-person ones um, and we can take a look at that and answer any questions that you have can we talk about deposits and what is pretty you know typical to pay and what is not and what those red flags should be and even getting it back are there are there's some language around when you have to receive that money back after you move out uh, the the landscape of deposits is really has really changed in the last several years we're seeing things where deposits are 75 150 dollars under special programs that the landlords have mm -hmm. all the way up to one thousand two thousand dollars and you know kind of looking at what was traditional one month's worth of rent um, as a security deposit and so that that is really all across the board at this point but if you're if you're paying more than one month's worth of rent for your security deposit that definitely is something that should raise your eyebrow and say why why do i have to put that much money into this um, I, ahead of time you know particularly if you've got a good rental history and those sorts of things to answer your second question, what is what is getting your security deposit back look like? Um, again, in most most of the counties across, or for most of the population across Tennessee, um, what you want to do when you're ready to move out is schedule a walkthrough with your landlord, and that is a time um, to look through and say, "Hey, is there anything um, that's messed up in the property?" If the tenant doesn't agree with the landlord's list, the tenant should make their own list and give it to the landlord. Uh, my best advice to any tenant. Um, across the state is when you're moving into a property before you move a single thing in go through and take pictures of every square inch of the property so you can show this is what it looks like today on the day I moved in and then move your move your furniture in and then same thing when you moved out of a property get everything out clean it because it needs to be broom clean it needs to be in that same shape as it was when you first moved in and then go take those pictures again to say this is what it looked like the day I moved out 
before I left the property. That's going to be your best evidence if the landlord tries to keep or tries to sue you, tries to keep your security deposit or tries to sue you for more money, saying that you po punched holes in the mm -hmm. walls or you tore down the blinds, those sorts of things. Good information. Okay, we have to take another quick break already. When we come back, if you have questions, we'll take them. 615-737-PLUS. Stay with us.